Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Let me check my time, that way I will not be late. <laughs> um, let's put this time in the Lord's hands. Thank you very much, Lord, because you, you're present, you're, you're alive, and we can see it in the daily basis, oh, Father. You take care of us, you help us, you feed us, you guide us through different situations, you provide for us, uh, you love us in every way you can. Thank you, Father, for this uh, wonderful church, for uh, this group of people who love you, oh, Father. We're here because we love you. Uh, we're here because we want to seek a little bit more about your love. We want to know you a little better, oh, Father. Thank you, Lord, because we have the blessing to be safe, oh Father. Thank you because you look for us and you pull us out of our sins. And, and we, we can say that you are our Savior and our Lord, oh Father. Um, thank you, Father, because this, this, uh, this opportunity for me to share the word is, 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 is your will. And I ask you, Father, that it will not be me talking, that it will be your will be done. That it will be your Holy Spirit talking through me, O oh Father, about this uh, subject, hospitality. Help us, O oh Father, to show hospitality. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 When the uh, pastor asked me to preach, he gave me the... Uh, sometimes he allowed me to just choose whatever I want, but sometimes he asked me to preach on a, about a specific subject. And he asked me to preach this time about true hospitality true hospitality and um, that's a subject very real in my life I will not be here without your hospitality I consider this church my family as you know um, you know now I have cheerly so it's easier you know we have something to do after church but before when I was by myself when church was over everybody went home and I was I didn't have a place to go you know, so uh, it was a, it, it, you're being a very important part of my life and, and ministry in this community. Uh, and, um, but I really start thinking about what really hospitality means. You know, and Pastor put through hospitality. So I, well, hey, if he put through, it's because, you know, that means that is maybe another one next to it not being through. And I check in the Bible, you know, what hospitality means, because I always like to go to the Greek, and I know that's old school, but I just love to do it. And, and, and it, 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 it comes from um, philoxenia. And, and if you remember, a long time ago, uh, you, when we used to study the different kinds of love that Jesus showed us, or that God showed us, philos was one of those. So philoxenia is two, two words. Philos means love. And extenia, strangers. So basically, hospitality means love strangers. Love strangers. And, and, that's, and if you really think about it, and I check in the Greek too, what is a, what is a, a stranger? Because I'm a stranger here. You know, my English is kind of weird. I look kind of different. I think kind of different. And I... I many times make many mistakes because what people call culture chuck. You know, I was so used to do things in a certain way, but in America it's in a different way. But, you know, talks a couple times and talk a couple of people to explain that to me. Okay. Like one time they asked me to pick up all the bricks and all the pieces of wood from the yard, and I pick it up. I walk straight lines and I pick everything up and I put it next to the tree. When they came home, they were upset. Say, said, why you didn't do what I asked you to do? And I said, I did it. And you asked me to pick all the bricks and all the little pieces from the grass? I did it. He said, ah, but you didn't put it in the tree line, so the city will take it. I said, ah, you didn't explain that part to me. In my country, we just burn it. <laughs> so when he realized he didn't explain to me the whole picture, he said, ah, I apologize. Next time, put it in the tree line. <laughs> and I always have to pay extra attention to what people is doing. You know, even here at the church, when people are doing things in the kitchen, I have to pay attention. How are you doing it? Because you do it different. You know, you, you like to follow the recipe. 
We just guessed. We just put a little bit of everything. <laughs> so I don't want to mess up your recipe. As you know, I have to watch and stay. And I, you know, I, if somebody guides me, I do it. It's just that I don't want to do it. You know, I am not always afraid I will mess up. But that really means hospitality and it's love of strangers. And, and, and I will say this church has been doing a great job with me and my family. Because I really and I deeply love this church. Because you help me in every way that I, you know, that I can imagine. And, and I, I think I shared about this a long time ago, but I just want to finally close the story. But this suit that I'm wearing today is the suit that one time when I was preaching, um, the Lord asked me to share that I didn't have a suit. And I was fighting with the Lord, and I was saying, Lord, I don't want to share that part. I don't want to say that because I don't want to kind of try to... You know, I don't like to say, oh, I don't have that way somebody will give me. No, I mean, the Lord is always good with me. He always gives me more than enough. You know, sometimes when I go out of the, of the John Eagle or Walmart or, you know, I, I, I'm looking for my car and I cannot believe I have a Toyota Highlander. I say, where's my car? Oh, yes, yeah, the Toyota. Because <laughs> I never told my life I will have a car that nice. <laughs> you know, I didn't, I, I didn't have a ways to pay for that, but the Lord created the ways to pay for it. And, and. When I, when I share that, you know, in the sermon, I, I think I share this, this part with you. And I fight, and I fight, and I fight, but I always put in things at the last minute, not because I didn't prepare. I prepare, you know, I show on the sermon for weeks, and I, and I study really hard, but the Lord just keep putting new things at the last second. And um, I finally did it, and I was a Lord, I don't want to do it, but I did it. And as soon as I came home, and I shared this with my Sunday school class, uh, as soon as I came home, somebody from a different church was waiting for me at the, at the driveway. And I said, you know, hello, how are you doing? What are you doing here? So he said, well, the Lord asked me this morning to, and asked my wife that we have to buy you a suit. And I said, I have to be honest, I told him, get out of here. You know. <laughs> don't take, I was like a little bit upset. And I said, don't, don't you dare take the glory away from the Lord. You know, who told you from First Christian Church? I just asked for a suit 10, 10, 20 minutes ago. He said, no, nobody told me. Show me your cell phone. And I said, you know, he showed me his cell phone. When he gave me his cell phone, I, I feel the presence of the Lord. And I put my head down and I said, I'm sorry. He said, no, the Lord just been bothering us all morning that we have to get you a suit. So we have to get a suit. And this is the suit. Praise the Lord. <laughs> that's hospitality. He didn't have to, you know, spend that amount of money in a in stranger. You know, that's, these things cost money. And, but he decided to do it. And I tried. I was a little disobedient. And I, he took me to the mall and I, I switched my blessing for a tennis shoe and some pants. <laughs> And, and the tennis shoes didn't last more than a month. And the, the tennis shoes, you know, are, are worthless now. And they're expensive tennis shoes, but the Lord told me, I told you, the money was for a suit, not for tennis shoes. <laughs> so I said, Lord, I'm sorry, I was in disobedience. So he called me again, and he told me the same thing. I'm sorry, I buy you those shoes, but I, the Lord keep telling me, I give you money, I want you to get a suit. <laughs> so we went for the second time to the mall, and we get finally the suit. But that's, that's hospitality. You know, it's doing something for a complete stranger. When you know maybe that you will not, you never are going to be repaid. But what comes to your mind when we mention hospitality? If you can really think about it, or if you can think a minute. What comes to your mind when we think when we say hospitality? I don't know what comes to your mind, but basically hospitality means taking care taking care of a guest. Taking care of a guest. And it comes from the same word, that's why we say hospital. Because what, what happened in the hospital? They take care of you. Even when you don't want to. You want to sleep, but the nurse is waking you up every three hours to take blood out of you. And you want to sleep. But they take care of you one way or the other. If you, even if you don't want to, they take care of you. See? And that, that's what they do in hotels, too. You know, you, you go into a hotel and you are a guest. You are a very important person. You are the VIP. You know, I always say VIP. Uh, that, does, that really means pay more money. The bill is going to be bigger. 
And you, you know, you're the VIP, you know, that's, they, they take care of you. They give you this breakfast you want in the middle of the night. They take, you know, the room service and all those, you know, spas. And they make you feel good. They make you feel better. You know, that's hospitality today. But basically, hospitality really means place where you feel home away from home. It's the place that you feel like you're home, you know, that feeling that comes through you when you're really home. You know, when you come home and you can take your shoes off and you can relax and say, oh, we're home. Sometimes in, in, you can think, in what other place you feel that way? I hope you will say this church. Because I come to this church and I feel, I'm home. I don't care what's going on out there, but I'm here, pastor will save me. Hopefully. I feel relaxed when I come to church. I feel that my family is here. You know, somebody was, was holding the door for us this morning, you know, and you, oh, thank you. You know, you feel so nice. You know, as soon as you get out of your car, people in the parking like, good morning, good morning, good. You feel good. You feel appreciated. But maybe we feel that way with relatives. You know, maybe if you can think, we have a say in Spanish uh, that I don't know if it will make too much sense in English, but we say it's no better hotel than mama's hotel. Yeah. And be, by the way, happy Mother's Day. If you have your mom around, take, you know, take care of her today. Uh, you know, take advantage of her today. Kiss her. Take, the, take her to eat something nice. I don't have her close to me, or I will. But I call her every week. Sometimes two, three times a week. Uh, but, but it's no better place like Mons Hotel. You know, it's like when you come home and you feel that smell. Ah, my mom is doing my favorite dish. You know, my mom is guilty of this because she stayed for six months and she cooked for me for six months. So I eat a lot. <laughs> or if you go to grandma. Grandma is really nice if you go to grandma and grandpa. And here we have a lot of grandmas and grandpas. You know, but grandma and grandpa, kitchen is always open. Kids and hugs are unlimited. See, and grandma and grandpa can do whatever they want. They don't care because they're going to live the next week and then the parents have to take care of it. <laughs> but maybe that's a wonderful place. That's why they would like to go to grandma and grandpa. Because they know grandma and grandpa, you know, they, will, they will take care of you. They, you know, they will give you, you know, they will help you in every way. But thinking about this, you know, we, we come back to our sermon. It's about what is really true hospitality and what is not true hospitality. And I was facing, I studied hospitality through the whole Bible, and I was facing two different things. What hospitality means in the Bible and what hospitality means today. If you really think about it, it's different. Because uh, let's, let's read, Pastor asked me to base my sermon today in Luke ch uh, chapter 14, 1 through 14. But I'm just going to read a little portion from uh, <clears throat> verse 7. It said, when we notice how you guests pick up the places of honor at the table, he told them, he was, this was Jesus, he was talking to the, all the religious leaders of, of, of his time. When you may have been invited, uh, you know, he was talking to the Pharisees and religious people that they love to be the ones on the first place. They love to be the VIP. And he noticed that when they came to eat, they always take the better places. And he told them, you don't take the better place. You, talk, you take the last place. And then if the host come to you and said, come, come to the front with me, you will feel really nice. But what if you sit in the brown place, you sit in the VIP section and they say, sir, your ticket is, you're in the brown section. You know, you will feel discouraged, you will feel bad. And that's what Jesus is talking right here. He was, you know, he was telling them, you have to be humble. And he says in verse 11, for all of those who excel themselves will be humble and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Hospitality in the Bible really means do it for the Lord. Not do it for, because somebody's looking at you. It's not, but sometimes hospitality is, is hard to really take, really do it. You know, really, 
hospitality is not easy if we really think about it. Because as we said, hospitality means love of strangers. And you don't love strangers. Strangers means people that is not equal to you. So you open your house to your friends, to your family, because you know them. You know their ways. You know they're going to eat in a certain way, and you know they're going to behave in a certain way. But what if you open your house to somebody that you really don't know? That's, that's uncomfortable. You know, if, you, if we really think about it, but First Peter 4, 9, First <clears throat> Peter 4, 9 says, Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. And I'm hoping that I'm pronouncing that correctly. But basically means offer hospitality to one another without talking too much. <laughs> because they really take it away. You know, sometimes we, we serve somebody, oh, good morning, how you doing? You know, we, we say so many things with our tongue, but inside it's like, oh, Lord, why I have to take this, this door to the church? <laughs> Oh, Lord, that was the lady who took my spot last week. <laughs> so that takes completely away the hospitality. Because you're doing it for the people to see you, but you're not doing it for the Lord. So if you don't do it for the Lord, you're not going to have a reward. You're not going to have, you know, something nice for you from the Lord. But if we really think about it, practicing hospitality is difficult. Let's, let's just mention a couple of the, of the issues we face when we practice hospitality. But practicing hospitality takes money. When you invite something to somebody to eat in your house or in a restaurant, you have to pay a little more. You know, and I, I, this is not talking, you know. You, you are allowed to talk to the Lord, you know, because I've I, been in that position many times. When seven kids show up in my house, and I know they're kind of hungry. Yeah. I say, Lord, that goes my cereal. <laughs> <laughs> and I, but I said, you know, I didn't say that to the kids. I just say, Lord, you know my situation, but <laughs> you will help me, Lord. I just pray to him, and I share what, the little bit I have. I, I share it, but sometimes we don't want to practice hospitality because we think we're not good enough. We don't have enough money. You know, we, we, only, we only can do it if we take it to the best restaurant. And I don't want to mention names, but those ones, you know, where you eat those uh, fish, you know, a lot of fish, but, you know, only if we go to that restaurant. No. Re really, w when you enjoy, uh, you know, eating with somebody, it's not about the food. It's about the company. It's about the environment. It's res those restaurants that don't, don't kick you out, you know, the, you don't have 10 people waiting outside for you to leave the table. You can stay there for hours enjoying conversation. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we don't practice hospitality because of time. We're always busy. In America, we want everything yesterday, everything yesterday. Because here you get paid by the hours. So you want to put more hours into your day, that way you get more money. <laughs> and at the end of your life, you can have a lot of money in the bank, but then you, have some, you don't have people to share that with. That happens to many people. We don't, we don't practice hospitality, we don't love, we don't, we don't show love to others, to our family, because, some, you know, we can maybe have people in our family that we consider strangers, because they're kind of weird, you know, it's the people that we don't invite for Thanksgiving, we don't invite for Christmas, because I, I have one family that they, they, they didn't invite them for Christmas because they don't have enough chairs. That was, they explained to me, I said, but we can go to Walmart and get more chairs. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, time. But where are we putting our time? You know, we're always so, you know, so behind that we forget to smile to somebody, that we forget to say thank you to the cashier, that we forget to say thank you to the people at the bank. That we for, you know, we're not, hospitality is something that you can share everywhere. We're not talking about church itself. We're talking about everywhere. And it's in, if, you, if you create that warm feeling in people, people will, will love to be with you. But if you're always you know, upset, if you're always kind of you know, negative, people will don't, don't want to be around you. What, uh, distances here. You know, everything is so far. We have to drive everywhere. So we, we cannot take 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, maybe an hour to go visit somebody. 
And years and years pass and you don't see that person. I noticed here in America because that was a new tradition for me that here in America after the funeral they stayed and eat. That was, that was that's, that's not appropriate in my country. I enjoy it here because sometimes I'm hungry, so they, you know. <laughs> and you can, you, and I see the, the, the logic in that decision, in that piece of the culture, because ev here everybody lives so far away that that's the time when all the family come together and they have a wonderful time and celebrate the life of that person. I, you know, I don't want to sound disrespectful. It was just new for me. When I came to church and I asked Brian one time, what's the smell? He said, no, they're cooking downstairs. I said, well, in my country, when that happens, we don't feel like we're hungry, so we don't eat. But, but that's, you know, sometimes that's the only time when we see people. Because we're always, you know, far away. We don't take the time. We don't have the money. So time, time passes and time passes and time passes until it's too late. You know, maybe sometimes it's too late. Sometimes uh, uh, something else that will take us away from showing hospitality is that we don't think we're good enough. <coughs> oh, no, no, no. Hospitality at the church, that's why we pay pastor. That's why we have a stuff. You know, they're supposed to evangelize. They're supposed to talk to people about Jesus. They're supposed to, you know, stand, stand out, uh, outside and check, shake hands and say hello to the new people. They, they're supposed to create a system. It's not up to me. I'm doing my part. It's putting the money on the plate. Sometimes we really don't say it, but maybe that's, maybe that's how we think. Hospitality is somebody else's business. We're not good enough. We don't, we don't invite people to our house. You know, maybe if he's, this brother, he had a wonderful house. He had a barbecue in his garden. He has so, you know, so many awesome things. He lives in a good area of, of town. Maybe he can, he, he can host people. But no, I mean, my house, no, it's kind of creepy, and I don't have good stuff, and I don't have, you know. Mm -hmm. But really, when you are enjoying your time, you don't care about those things. Maybe you sometimes go to a restaurant that though you don't really like, but you like the company. You know, I found a hospital, a hospital, <laughs> I found a restaurant in Johnstown, I'm sorry. <laughs> I spent my days in the hospital too much. <laughs> I found a, a, a restaurant, maybe you, see, you saw it on the news, and I'm, I'm not gonna say the name because this is not for advertising, but, but it's, a, it's a Chinese place where people wait for three hours to get in. And they only take like 20 people a day. And so it's people wait for two months to go in because they said the food is not really that good, but they feel welcome there. They talk, they have good conversation. And I say, well, one, I don't know if I want to wait three hours for a, <laughs> for a little rice. But, but uh, one day maybe I'm going to pray the Lord will do something and I will squeeze in just to check. But that's, you know, we have so many excuses to don't show hospitality to people. We have so many excuses to don't show love to people because we're busy, because we don't have time, because we don't have money, because I'm not good enough, because I'm, I, I, I'm the weird one. Maybe, maybe, maybe if I'm somebody you know, famous in my, in, in my circle, ah, yeah, yeah, he's the guy, but not me. You know, I, I'm, the, I'm the bottom. Let me tell you something. For Jesus Christ, is, that doesn't really exist. It's not such a thing as you being the bottom, or you be the, the, the weird one or the worst one. For Jesus Christ, you are the best of the best. You're the, chosen by the King of Kings. The God of Gods. And that's, but that's what the world want to teach us. That's what we're talking about through hospitality and not through hospitality. The Bible teaches that we have to do it for the Lord. The Bible teaches, as he says right here, for all of those who exalt themselves will be humble and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Exalted. And it, you know, when you do it for the Lord, you feel fulfilled. You know the Lord will repay you. What a wonderful thing! One time I I, I taught a kid to have, have glasses, and when they gave us the prize, uh, it was something that I knew the family cannot afford. So I was getting ready to call Brother Cliff to ask him for money, but a lady came to us and he said, she said. We, I can pay for it. I said, did you understand, you know, it's over $200? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to call my husband later. <laughs> I said, well, and she paid. 
bring her checkbook and she paid for the glasses and I didn't have a clue who she was. <laughs> That's hospitality. She take care of a completely stranger. I didn't know who she was. I figured it out like six, six months later when I found her in a different church, when I went to talk to a different church. But the world want to teach us all those things. Oh, you cannot do it because of time. You cannot do it because you're far away. You cannot do it. Because we think hospitality today is a business. Because that's what they put here. And if you really think about it, hospitality is a business today. In our culture today, hospitality is a business. It's entertainment. You know, they, if they take care of you in a hotel, you go to that hotel. If you give you more things, you go to that hotel. If, you, if you give, they give you more things in a show, they entertain you, you go to that show. And even churches. If they offer better things at church, if they have more technology, if they have better this and better that, and they have better coffee, you know, espresso machine, maybe I go. <laughs> and I've been in so many churches. You feel it. But let me tell you, you don't feel the Holy Spirit in some of those churches. You don't feel that the Lord is talking to you in some of those churches. And I'm not criticizing anybody. I'm not saying we're talking bad against technology. No, 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 no. But that's what the war is putting into our minds today. Being ho hospitality means entertain people. So no, we, you know, we have to watch out why we're going to preach because maybe they will feel discouraged and they're going to leave the church. But if you really think about it at the end of, of everything, if we see hospitality today as a business, it's about money. They treat you good in the hotel because you know you're going to pay at the end. What's the first thing they ask you when you show up at the hotel? A piece of plastic that you have to carry with you everywhere. Your credit card. They don't even trust you. They said if you break something, we have your credit card on file. If you take something with you, you will be charged. So they don't even love you. They don't trust you. They, they make you think they, they trust you. They make you think you're a VIP. But at the end, all, what they, all they want is money. <laughs> and they want your money and they have your credit card on file and they, sometimes they even charge you for things you didn't, you didn't do. One time I went to a hotel and I thought the breakfast was included and I was so happy. Oh, what I want for breakfast. Then they gave me the bill. I said, oh Lord, I should just go to the McDonald's across the street. <laughs> <laughs> it, was too, it was too expensive. But when you practice hospitality in the name of the Lord, you know, the Lord trusts you. People trust you. And I'm going to ask Brian to put the next picture on the screen, please. That's hospitality for me. And that's one of the verses that I have in my mind every day when I do what I do. When I spend hours and hours and hours in the hospital. And let me read it for you. It said, the king will say to those on the right, come, you who are blessed by my father." Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. What a wonderful thing. And at the end, the Lord said, whatever you did for any of, the, on any of these little ones, you did it for me. It says right here in verse 45. Truly I tell you, whatever you did not for, <clears throat> did not for the least of the least, you did it for me. That's true hospitality. True hospitality means they don't care about your credit card. They don't even check your wallet. They care about your heart. And at the end, the reward for fake hospitality is money. But the reward in this side, the Lord will give you his reward. Because he said, whatever you do for these little ones, you did it for me. We're so focused in being famous to receive recognition. But how many things, what was the thing that Jesus said every time he made a miracle? You know, it was kind of hard to do, but when he healed somebody, 
They said, shh, don't tell anybody. Keep it quiet. Maybe go to your family, show to your family and your priest, but shh, keep it quiet. And those guys were jumping, you know, because they were happy. You know, it was, as I said, they were not disobedient. It's hard to, you know, it's hard to not, 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 not tell everybody that you're, you're, the Lord just healed you. But the Lord knew that it was for his father's glory what he was doing. The Lord knew his reward will be in heaven. That lady who paid for those glasses, he's never, she's never going to be repaid. I, don't, I didn't say I'm going to pay you later. I didn't even know her name. She just did the, the check and she gave it to the, to the cashier and they gave, me, you know, they gave me the order for the glasses. And many times that happened. Many, many times. I, I, sometimes people I don't know and they say uh, they know me. That I, you know, so I go to a restaurant and they say, I'm, gonna pay, I'm going to pay the bill. And I say, where's my bill? No, somebody already paid for it. Who? Oh, no, they left already. I said, thank you, Lord. I should have asked for more earlier. <laughs> <laughs> he does it all the time. If you really think about it, if you really think about it, Hospitality means love in action. Love in action. I will say that's the better, better or the best translation for hospitality. Love in action. We can talk about love and we, you know, we can talk as much as we want. But if we really don't show it, it doesn't really count. We can say I love you all day long, but if you don't really take care of people, that doesn't really count. Maybe you will say, oh, how can I be nice to people if they, they, they were not nice to me? But if you think about Jesus Christ, what they did to Jesus Christ, that is our example. You know, they treat him really bad. They, his, some of his disciples betrayed him, they hit him, and they crucified him. And what he did three days later when he, when, after he came back, and he... He went and looked for his disciples. He was serving people. He was teaching. He didn't say, oh, you betrayed me. I'm going to just stay in my house and wait for the Lord to take me to, you know, to heaven. I don't want to see you anymore. And I, I'm telling you, if, if that's your excuse for not showing hospitality, ask the Lord to heal you. Ask the Lord to give you whatever, whatever you need to be, whatever you need to have and, and to show hospitality, to show love to people. You don't have to have money because hospitality doesn't really mean money. Hospitality means take care of people. I always remember my supervisor in Awana, Phil Bell. You know, when you call him, he always made me feel good, just answering the phone. Little brother, how you doing? I don't know if you have somebody like that. But just when they are on the phone, you feel good. How <sighs> glad I call. And you're kind of worried, maybe you're, ask, you're going to ask him for something. But they, ask you, they answer the phone in such a wonderful way that you feel good automatically. And I always try to remember that myself when somebody called me at 2 in the morning. <laughs> Good morning, how may I help you? What do you need? And sometimes I have to tell, call me tomorrow in business hours. <laughs> but I always have to remember that if my Lord suffered for, for me, what I cannot suffer for people. If hospitality was easy, the Lord would, you know, it, it, it didn't have any challenge in, in itself. Maybe you're going to help people that is kind of smelly. Maybe you're going to help people that doesn't share your beliefs. Maybe you're going to help people that you're kind of embarrassed to sit with them in a the table. But who cares? All I care is my Lord. All I care is the newspaper of heaven. I asked long time ago, long time ago, this is, this is like three years ago, uh, when they tried to interview me for different newspapers and I refused, I said, no, don't, I don't want to give any interviews. I'm sorry. And I don't want to sound arrogant with that, but I said, I'm sorry, but no. I asked the police department, please stop putting my name in the reports. Just put local interpreter. Because then the guys, the bad guys were chasing after me. But, but I said, I will, I will rather be in the newspaper of heaven than in the newspaper of Salem. <laughs> The newspaper of Salem, I can pay it with money. If I have enough money, I can put my picture in the front. But the paper of heaven, I cannot pay with money. 
And that's what I'm, I, you know, God doesn't sleep, of course. But I will always picture that sometimes I want my Lord to smile when He thinks about me. And that's why I always work hard and help everybody with the same way of, of love. And even doing things that doesn't really, that is not really church. One time, the in, w Consumers National Bank called me. They said they want to help me. They want me to help them, and I'm going to close with this. They want me to help them with some guy who have some papers, and they didn't understand what it was because it was in Spanish. So when I start talking to the guy, uh, I know his English was so broken. I said, I'm sorry, do you speak Spanish? And he said, yes, sir. I said, can you please talk to me in Spanish because I don't have a clue what you're saying. And he started talking in Spanish to me, and I noticed he was Colombian in Spanish. And he's maybe in his, in his 70s. And I said, I'm sorry, sir, but are you Colombian? He said, yes. I've been in the U.S. for 50 years. He didn't have any family. I, I think he's been in Salem for 30 years. He doesn't have any family. He doesn't have any kids. And I found him through the bank. He invited me to Burger King. I hate Burger King, but <laughs> he invited me there, so I ate it. So, Lord, I put it in. You keep it inside. <laughs> now we're good friends. Now I share with him the gospel through a bank. Just don't waste opportunities that the Lord is creating for you to show hospitality, to show love in action. Do it today. If you, you already gave a gift to your mom, but you know somebody who his kids are far away, maybe stop by and give them something. Or maybe invite them to eat with you. Just put your love in action. At the same way that, the, that Jesus did it for you, even when we betrayed him, and even when he suffered for us. And... I'm going to pray for this, but I'm going to just put one last thought in your minds. Hospitality is really close to hospital. And the, the reason pastor asked me to preach about this issue is because he wants us, or we want to be more, a more welcoming church, more warm church. So don't think that the staff has to do it. We have to do it. We are the church. This is just a, a building. We are the church. We are the ones who have to... You know, and I, I, I can come outside and I have my people who give me hugs every Sunday. And I have to be honest, some, maybe I will not remember their names. I'm bad with names. But I always look and, what is my other hug? You know. <laughs> but church is a hospital. Church is equals hospital. Church is a place with sick people. Church is a messy place. Because hospitals are not nice. That's why some people ask, I don't want to receive any visitors. Because in hospitals, you see things that you don't want to see. You smell things you don't want to smell. You deal with things you don't want to deal. You see pain. You see suffering. And that's church. Church means hospital. And you're in the right hospital. If you're here for your first time, and you have something to take care, I cannot promise you we're the perfect church. It's not such a thing as a perfect church. But if you find it, call me, please. I will, I will love to see it. <laughs> but if you want a place or you want a church that will try to take care of you the best we can, maybe we'll not have all the medicine, but we don't care. Because the best medicine is Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you very much because you gave us the opportunity. You gave us the, uh, the bridges, the, the days, the time, the money. The Bible said if we want something, we shall ask you and you will give us more than enough. So give us time, O oh Lord. Give us time to drive far away to see people. Give us money to invite people to places. Give us extra clothes to clothe people. Give us extra food to feed people. Give us extra drinks to drink. So, you know, give drinks to people. Give us extra things for school to share a pencil, to share a book, to share something, a book pack. Whatever we have to share, maybe with a child that her mom doesn't care for her at school. Whatever opportunities you create, oh Father, just help us to fulfill it. Help us to do it to your eye, oh Father. Not to, to, for people to see us. We want this church to be famous, but famous to you, oh Lord. We want that one day when we are in front of your presence, you will say, First Christian Church, well done, my servants. Well done. If we are, we don't, if we're lacking something, Lord, just please give us provision of whatever we're lacking to show more hospitality to people. 
Use your Holy Spirit, O oh Father, to clean our ears, that way we can hear needs, people in need. That clean our eyes, that way we can see people in need. Thank you, O oh Father, because you show us hospitality. We were strangers, and you adopt us as, as, your, as your kids. We're, we're sons of daughters of the highest of the highest, the Lord of lords, the King of kings. So help us, Lord, to share that with everybody around us, with people in our neighborhood. Help us, Lord, not only to share our parking lot to the neighbors, but share love and compassion to the neighbors. That way they can come to church and see you. Help us to be the perfect hospital. Maybe we'll be behind, but help us, Lord, to heal people and build people up and, 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 and heal people in any way we can. All these things I ask you, O oh Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you for the time. If you, if you need to talk to a, 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 a minister, if you want to serve in the church, if you want to feel connected, it, we're on the triage. We're, we have a triage system, you know, like in the emergency room. And you don't have to sign before they allow you. Even when you're done, you have to sign. You just have to go to the, I don't remember how you call it, but to the, to the new room with iPads. And they will find you new connection. But something is for sure. If you're here looking for the Lord, you're in the right place. God bless you.